Welcome to Off Track, the motorcycle racing podcast, brought to you in proud partnership with JNS Accessories and Bimoto Motorcycle Insurance. So, welcome back to the Devit MCN London Bike Show. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who needs no introduction whatsoever, Steve Plater. Buster, welcome to the show, mate. Welcome to Off Track. How are you, mate? I'm good, thank you. Finally got you on the show. I know, it's been a while. I'm just feeling a little bit left out, you know what it's like. Well, you, a, you, bit, a bit second, not second hand, but probably 120. How many have you done there? 100 and, yeah. If yeah. you didn't keep running away from us, you'd be all right. <laughs> but mind you, we did do one. You maybe not remember. We did one back in 2014, 2015 for Motopod. We did it over the phone. I you were working with focused you know events and I things. I cannot remember. I do so many different things. That you say? get all snowballs. It's not mate. going back really six does. or seven years. It may no, probably more than that. Timothy bangs on the head. That's what the wife says. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, you know, we're sat astride the F900R. We've got a new race series coming into BSB support classes replacing the Ducati Tri-Options Cup. Tell us something about it. You're the man behind it. Yeah, brilliant. You know, I've been involved in One Mate Series now for a few years. You know, I had two years with the KTM brand on the with the RC390 Cup and then um, I was asked to, to jump on board with the uh, Ducati Tri-Options and I've been six years as an ambassador for that uh, race series, which has been fabulous, you know. As anything, um, you know, the Ducati decided to go a different direction. They've been doing it for many years now. So uh, I spoke with uh, BMW, who were already uh, building the F900R, which is a, a twin-cylinder fabulous bit of kit, um, with the intention, of course, of running a British Championship as a support series, just like the others, um, over nine rounds. So eight rounds of BSB in 2023 for the F900, and also supporting the World Superbikes at Donington Park. Excellent. So uh, all looking good, you know, uh, Stuart Higgs, the race series director at BSB with MSVR, you know, he came up with a fabulous solution of running a supercross style. We've had that much interest in the race series from uh, racers from all kind of levels, you know, youngsters to old has-beens, not me, I'm too old, <laughs> uh, various, you know, big names uh, have been very interested and we had kind of a hundred people showing uh, interest so we opened up entries quite early or msvr did and we've got 50 signed up already that's we, an incredible we can number take uh, up to 72 really because going back to what i was saying about stuart higgs and his supercross format brilliant idea um two heats so each heat uh the top 16 from each heat go through to the grand final which will be running between the two super races on sunday to get prime time with the crowd and the course with the tv um, there'll be a last chance qualifying race for everybody else so you get a minimum two races definitely and the top six I think it is top six from last chance qualifying also go through to the final for the grand final and then uh I think by the time this podcast comes out, no, not quite. This podcast comes out next week yep. as we're talking Indeed. after the bike show. But just after then, the end of next week, we've got a big conference call going on with uh, myself, Stuart Higgs, and all of the riders signed up so far. We will then release the prize funding, which will be quite uh, quite appealing to many riders. Not just uh, prize funding for uh, top 10, really, and two separate championships within one, but also uh, a grand prize for the winner of this series so wow i've already got some big names knocking on the door uh, to come and do the first couple of rounds uh, can you imagine once that's released how many more people are going to be knocking well on the door? that's the plan you know it's a little bit of a tease of course we've got quite a few people that are um kind of uh, looking at doing this series but not quite sure not quite sure it's going to hang out so i believe this will bring on bring the number of even higher i'll be quite happy to get 25 per race anyway yeah for the first season because without doubt this is going to be a classic fabulous bit of elbow bashing and some cracking racing do you think it was it was time that it, it was timely for ducati to go a different direction and introduce something like the bmw f 900 r cup to refresh the single make series a little bit we've had some great champions in the ducati cup over the years some fabulous racing shuey was a, a worthy champion with josh day as well and we've had john mcginnis in there and chris walker but to bring in now a new breed from maybe from Thundersport, from different club races to be able to get to the BSB scene. Do you think it's probably timely that, that this series has now come into the fore? Yeah, incredibly. You know, first and foremost, Ducati, I think they ran... Don't quote me on this. I think it was 12 years in the it was end. It a long you time, know, it was yeah. fabulous. It really was. And they did, they did a great job and they left 
left a lot of it to me when I was there to organise, which was fabulous. And it was a great series, you know, with a fabulous entry. Um, but everything changes, you know, yeah. even the superbike. Stuart Higgs done a great job for, for 2023. Uh, it's going to change a little bit the format, the point system, as well as, you know, the end of the year. So things don't stay the same all the time. People get a little bit fed up. So it's, it's great, great to have a change, you know. BMW has stepped up to the mark. Um, the, the, the F900R is a cracking bike, it really is. Um, as in 104 horsepower at the back wheel, everything on every bike is exactly the same, from KTEC suspension to RNG crash protection, um, Pirelli tires for everybody, a one make fuel, so everything is exactly the same. You can hardly change anything. You know, there are different size riders, of course, so we've got three different seat heights, three different handlebar heights, and that's pretty much it. You, you get on with it you obviously purchase your own bike through your local BMW yes. dealer uh, buy your kit from Fortis Racing which is the same kit for everybody and rock and roll away you go two test meetings before the season starts one at Donington Park one at Silverstone and then get into the uh, the first round at Silverstone BSB you didn't fancy having a crack yourself do you know what I'll get offered so many rides annually on different things. Yeah, of course it'd be nice, but I'll have my hands full looking after all the riders. <laughs> You're going to be herding cats and the parents. Time. And the yeah, parents. Without doubt, yeah. Or everybody looks, loves looking after the parents, don't they? <laughs> so. uh, uh, of course. You know, and as you're going back to what you said about uh, attracting, you know, we're trying to attract young riders. This is the, uh, no, no race is cheap, but this is, probably, no. this is without doubt by far the lowest budget of racing to get yourself into the British yeah. Championship and showcase what, what quality is the rider has um, so it's a great kind of uh, stepping stone for youngsters uh, as well as people that have ridden before to jump on board and showcase in front of all the British Championship teams how good they are the good thing is going back to what you said about uh, attracting people from other championships to step up you know obviously we're also seeing over in uh, Ireland north and south how difficult it is at the moment with insurance cover and so on so there's a lot of riders from the south south of Ireland that are not going to be racing over there next year and they're all showing a lot of interest in our series so good. hopefully there'll be more of those guys we are trying to put on a facility for them to be able to leave their bikes over in the UK they just need to get in contact and speak to BMW UK and find out what the uh, what the system is there to get them over and get them uh, racing in the BMW. Just as we touch on the Northwest 200, there been a lot a lot of news recently about the insurance side of things. Um, you've been over there to do the in the um, the newcomers and the Stars Night that happened early last week. On a on a scale of one to ten, I'm not going to throw you under the bus too much. On the scale of one to ten, what are we looking at for the Northwest for this year? Are we? near a 10 or we're near a 5 I'll, get, I'll give you a get out there <laughs> listen it's very difficult Mervyn White you know uh, does an incredible job with his team 100% you know uh, with the Colerain Motorcycle Club to to put the event on it's an annual job in preparation so of course things have been moving on very quickly you know many many of the teams you can look around this little paddock here and you know you've got the FHO of, BM, of Peter Hickman and various other bikes you know they've got their years planned out uh, as well as Honda and all the other big manufacturers to take their bikes their teams and so on over there all their ferries are booked you know their entries are in Everything. and so on so it's very difficult now to answer your question I can't um, I didn't expect I, you could because nobody it, can other in than all the fairness, people involved. It's looking quite positive. Uh, good. The good thing is, uh, I mean, it's not because it's motorcycle racing. The problem is pretty much it's a volatile industry at the moment, the insurance. So uh, it will it will affect all disciplines of motorcycle racing or like any racing, really. But um, the good thing is there are two companies that are talking with Colerain District Motorcycle Club and the Northwest 200 to offer a service and a premium so uh, i know the organizers are waiting for those premiums to come back which is imminent it may even be here now because i left there on thursday night yeah it may even be here and from there they can decide whether it's within budget to run uh, the northwest 200 which is only 11 weeks time and it's probably the first big meeting so I know the council and uh, the government are very, very, very keen, including all the local business over there, because it mass it generates such oh, a massive, incredible, massive uh, boost to their economy that they're very obviously keen to keep that uh, event for for a long time coming. Yeah, and, and it, it's it's a jewel in the calendar as well, isn't it? We were across there last year. We we haven't cancelled our accommodation for this year yet, so we're still coming. That's the whole point of the positivity surrounding it. When you speak to yourself and to a couple of other riders and people involved, that the positivity is there. 
to make sure the Northwest goes ahead because it would be so sad to lose it and road racing over there in general. Moving on from that, you've just done your run here at the motorcycle show, going up the sprint on the, the F900R. What was that like? It, it look, it's, a, it's not the most conducive surface to it. No, hey, do you know what? I, I watched some of the guys who got up yesterday and it looks quite slippery and it doesn't look like there's a lot of braking there at the end, but actually there's plenty of room and it's it's fine. As far as the the, uh, the F900, um, really good actually. I've spent, I've probably done about 2,000 miles testing this bike, making sure everything's tipped up and ready for the new race series that's coming, just making sure everything's compatible, you know, various different brake pads with the disc, everything works together, the tyres, tyre sizes, various things, obviously reliability and so on. Everything's incred been incredibly good, no issues at all. Uh, and that includes the KTX suspension. But it's just a case of, uh, it's friendly, you know, it really is. It's, it's friendly, it's easy, it's only 104 horsepower, like I said earlier. So it's kind of not too much power to bite you, and the chassis is really good. So it, it reminds me of some of the um, One Make series many, many years ago, where there's not a lot of power, and you can just get on there, ride the things as hard as you can. There'll be a lot of slipstreaming. Uh, on some of the faster circuits, of course, uh, and, and obviously it'll drag on some fabulous racing. I can't wait to see how it pans out. What do hey, you how about this? Go on. A good spectacle. So go for it. Chatting, uh, chatting with Michael Rutter actually, and uh, on, who, this who, wasn't last uh, night uh, in the bar, uh, was it? No, 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 no. This, this, actually, no this is actually night. just before we left the northwest, wasn't <laughs> it? But. Um, just dangling some carrots I'm trying to get Michael on board for a, while, a couple of rounds if not the full season in 23 on the F900 uh, Cup yeah. but uh, you know we're chatting away it will be so good to have a one make series like the F900 Cup at the North West 200 and the TT and maybe one of the road races as oh, a small championship you know the same bikes the same power the same setup exactly the same pick the keys out of a hat and rock and roll and you know I put a lot of work into this championship alongside MSVR and Stuart Higgs yeah. his team and of course BMW and uh, that's something I'm going to push very hard it's dangled the carrot now and it's something uh, <laughs> I'm hoping they haven't heard anything about it yet but it's, uh, it's on my radar yeah, why not but to have a, a stars race would be incredible yeah, yeah, it'd be great. Get yourself, you know, get yourself in there. It, get Mike no, in there. no, get no. Hodgie my racing days, get Chris Walker. My in racing there. days are over. You know, I'll, I, I can I can absorb all of my time organising it. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and I'll enjoy that. You know, seriously. It, uh, no, no, I know. I know. It, uh, I, 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 I love the events. You know, and I'm very passionate about the racing, as you're well aware. But absolutely, uh, you've got to know when to stop. That's the important thing, is knowing when to yeah. stop. But you've got such a, a varied career outside of it now that you, you've barely stood still, which is fantastic to make that career after racing because it's so important. Some drift into broadcasting, things like that. You do a little bit with the Northwest 200 and the TT, but you're more manufacturing race-driven and organized and herding cats for a living, pretty much. Herding cats, that's one way of putting it. No, <laughs> I, hey, listen, it's different. You know, I, I manage the Synetic BMW team, of course, at MBSB. Coming on to that, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a varied lifestyle and working platform. You know, it's tough when you're managing riders because I'm not riding, they are. So it's not me riding the bike. It's not my mentality, it's theirs. You know, I work with some very, very fast riders on very capable machinery. But, um, you know, it's a tough championship. You know, the BMW, uh, the M1000RR for 23, fabulous bit of kit. You know, a world championship and British, it's going to be competitive. But so are many other bikes. So the boys have, realistically, the boys have got to raise their game and, and make it competitive and, and be and be on the pipe uh, every meeting to, 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 to win the goal at the end of the year. I think they were they, they had a great show in at Brands Hatch last season at the, at the final round. Both Danny was up on the podium, Peter was up there as well, um, Andrew Irwin was up there. So the, the bike was showing great potential towards the end of last season. Josh Brooks joining the fray on the FHO BMW, Danny Buchan on it, another season on the Synetic bike. There's another rider joining the fray, but we can't say because that's not been released yet, so that wouldn't be fair to him. Um, there's going to be some good talent on BMW machinery again this year. No, of course, you know, uh, new bike, you know, obviously testing starts very soon. Um, there's an awful lot of testing going on in Spain, and then we've got the big BSB tests that are coming up in the UK. Uh, Donington Park, Silverstone, and then we've got round one, then straight to Alton Park for another test. So there's plenty for the fans to go and see, but also it's great for the guys to get out there 
there and get some mileage, especially on the circuits we're going to be racing now. That's yeah. the most important part, it really is. And not just the circuits, the same, you know, the same temperature, the same grip levels, and there's, it, it, it's really, really important uh, because you don't get too much time with no. a new with the race series now and the way the format and the way they've got everything scheduled for British Superbike Championship. It's great. It's brilliant for the fans. You've got three races a weekend. Incredible. However, it's really hard for the teams. Um, and that's not moaning. It's the same for every team. Exactly no, the same. Absolutely. So when you have a new bike, a new model, it takes longer to get the bikes kind of up to really to that last half a second to get on the pipe and uh, stand on the podium. So it's so fast at the front. It really is. Oh, we saw that last season, didn't we? And, and this year now with the new point system as well, rather than the showdown, every round counts. So it, it puts a whole new uh, view on the championship where you have to be, that consistency is more key than ever. Oh, 100%. You know, it's... Uh, It'll, it'll take some getting used to a little bit you know it'll be hard work for the TV commentators they, they've got to remember all the difference in points and prizes well, I was thinking about that there needs to be something that... on the tank here for points well, no, so exactly, people know yeah. where they are but of course our job in, in the pit lane and in the box is to control and to let the boys know where they are what they're doing and yeah. this is in, in the races and go from there but you know I think it's always the same with, with, the, with the racing format and the schedule now with the three races and so on and qualifying is so important as well you cannot because, because everybody's so fast on, on each team and, and brand and manufacturer um, you've got to be somewhere near the, you've got to be front two rows at the start of the race especially Absolutely. on those shorter races you really have because like, like you said especially for 2023 because those points really count you know they do a great job you know uh, Stuart Higgs a race, race director he, he's always thinking of the way to change things he listens to the teams to the riders um, you know and changes things to suit and to keep everybody happy and to make it uh, a very competitive uh, championship and I think you know you've only got to look at the gate numbers in the crowds it, it's working it really is the most unenviable job in the oh, paddock it, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want yeah. that one would you no, <laughs> no. One, one final question because I haven't taken up enough of your time the same question I ask everybody at the end of every chat that we have and I know you're going to have some so don't you be pulling those stunts on me what's your best hire car story Buster being, being a very reserved, sensible, <laughs> uh, posh, gorgeous, Handsome, respectable, erudite, young yes. man, um, I'll keep my stories to myself. <laughs> Why? Nobody does that. You, you're not getting away that easy. Pick one. Uh, We've had people hung out to drive big time on this show, so don't worry. Nothing nothing too drastic. Oh, no, no, I'm going to tell you one. Right? There you go. I said this before on, a, on the I know I, there's I one on in the there. So not hanging right. out that yeah, probably don't know so Andrew Irwin this year obviously he's changed teams he's gone back to Honda but his crew chief Spider Spider you're going to love this dude <laughs> right so I've known Spider for a long time he, he, he worked for us uh, on the, on the uh, and a good guy uh, on, the, on the spanners at uh, Sanyo Honda in the late 90s many years ago good guy good character I was going out to a test at Cartagena circuit uh, and Spider was on the same flight going out so anyway he said oh can I just follow you to the track mate he said uh, you know I, I'm not really sure where I'm going it's only from um, Alicante or Mercia Airport yeah. so, no, you're not far. so he gets here and if you don't know the entrance to Cartagena you kind of drop off the main road and you drop down a winding road they've changed it a little bit now so you go down into an old kind of valley it is tarmac into, into a, into a rally stage left. yeah it's like a flipping rally stage a sharp left corner and so on and I've been going nice and steady. Well, he's one of those flipping drivers, right? That is on your back bumper. You know, he's got his chest out and you can see him flipping, foaming up the mouth when he's, when he's following you. We're only doing 70 mile an hour down the motorway. Anyway, so we turned off into the, and I started chuckling to myself and thought, right, so I went as fast as I could. And you know, when you're flipping driving and you are not sure if you're going to make the next corner, well, you know, we all do it at times. Um, I went into there kind of half grinning thinking, if he gets through here, he's going to be all right. I looked up in my rear view mirror to see these lights on the front of this eye car spinning as he spun into the bank on the far side all went all the way away and slid back down again bumper hanging off it oh, brilliant so I just burst out laughing I was crying my eyes out drove into the paddock was outside the garage and went in chuckling to myself everybody said what alright what are you laughing at I said oh nothing Spider turns up in his eye car, the front bumper's hanging off it, he gets out, phoning at the mouth, shouting and bawling, threatening me, it's all my fault. I said, hold on a minute, who was flipping driving? So, Spider, I'm not apologising. <laughs> See, that's the beauty of higher car stories. When they go right, they go really right. Oh, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Steve Plater, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for explaining so much about the F900R Cup that's coming up. Can't wait to see it out on circuit. It's going to be a fantastic time and hope you plenty of success with it and enjoy the 2023 season keep your eye on Eurosport it's going to be great racing ladies and gentlemen Steve Plater